Government action makes a bad situation worse. How we go from all those problems we've already read about to a full-blown Great Depression. So, just as a refresher, where are stock prices at this time? Way, way down. What's happening with banks in America by 1931? Banks are closing in record number. What's up with manufacturers in 1931? Manufacturers are struggling to sell their goods. They couldn't sell everything that they were making. And what's happening with farmers? Farmers are suffering probably the worst because they're not able to sell all the crops that they um, are growing and their mortgages have to be paid. Farmers are really struggling. So what can the government do? Well, a lot of people look to the Federal Reserve System, what's sometimes called the Fed. And the Fed, one of the things it does is, does is manage the money supply. The Federal Reserve is in charge of making sure there is enough money to go around, enough money for business to grow and thrive, but also not so much money that we have inflation. Um, it can change the amount of money in circulation in many different ways. One way it can do this is through changing what's called the discount rate. When the Fed changes the discount rate, that causes banks to change the interest rate that they charge customers. When interest rates go up, people are less likely to borrow money and there will be less money in circulation. When interest rates go down, people are more likely to take out a loan. And then there's more and then the money supply is going to grow. In the 1920s, the Federal Reserve set the interest rates at really, really low. This made borrowing really easy and there was lots of money in circulation. So the Fed set the discount rate low, that made banks set their interest rates low in the 1920s, and there was lots of money in circulation. In 1931, as the problems start to get bad, the Fed kind of panicked and the Fed raised interest rates. This is doubly bad. People had already stopped spending, and now the Federal Reserve has done something that makes them even less likely to spend money because it's now more expensive to get a loan. Additionally, businesses that are teetering on the brink of going out of business could not get a good loan, a loan with a good low interest rate, to stay in business. So lots of business owners said, the heck with it. I'm not going to take out a really expensive loan to stay in business when my company could fail and I'll lose even more money. So they just closed their business and suffered the losses that they had already endured. This puts a lot more people out of work. Now, more money could have helped if the Fed had lowered the discount rate and caused banks to lower their interest rates and made people more likely to spend and made businesses more likely to take out a loan to keep their doors open, it might have helped. But because of what they did by raising the discount rate and causing banks to raise their interest rates, businesses could not stay open. Workers were laid off and there was not as much money in the hands of consumers. What else did government do wrong? Government messed up with tariffs at the time. It's important to think of the Great Depression as a global event. This is not just affecting the United States. We're not too far removed from World War I, and during World War I, Great Britain and France and Belgium all took out big loans from the United States, from the U.S. government, from U.S. banks, from U.S. individuals. Great Britain, France, and Belgium have large amounts of money to pay back the United States. Germany has to pay reparations to France and Britain and Belgium. France and Britain and Belgium are counting on those reparations payments so that they can pay off their loans to us. All of those countries coming out of World War I need to be able to sell goods to the United States because we're really the only economy in decent shape after World War I. But after World War I, the United States passes high tariffs. They pass tariffs to protect American goods from competition by foreign producers. By passing these high tariffs, it really hurts European goods. It makes it harder for those European countries to pay us back. And in 1930, Congress passed the Hawley Spook Tariff, which raised the tariffs even higher. So high, in fact, that European countries started putting tariffs on American goods. Now it's harder for American producers 
to sell our goods in Europe. And that especially hurts farmers. Farmers and factories were overproducing at this time. Americans couldn't buy everything that uh, American farms and factories were producing. And now, as a result of these reciprocity tariffs that Europe puts up in response to our high tariffs, now American producers like farmers and factories can't even sell their goods in Europe either.